Cuando yo hablo, tú cállate la boca. ¿Tú entiendes? No hay que andar con tu cartera, por tuya. ¿Por qué? Necesito ayuda ahora. I didn't tell Johan that I had 10 suitcases, but I feel like he should have realized that I was moving here. We both know that I'm a better driver. It's not like he thinks he's a better driver. He knows damn well that I'm a better driver. Awesome! On this season of The Other Way, Danielle has successfully made herself a villain. We first met her on another spin-off show called Love in Paradise with her fiancé Johan. And we learned that Johan had some expectations from their relationship. But by the time they got married and appeared on this season of The Other Way, we learned that none of the expectations she promised were possible anymore. At 42 years old, Danielle was unable to have a baby naturally. And we watched her reveal on this season that she had no plans to take Johan back to the U.S. It was actually quite the opposite. She wanted to permanently move to the Dominican Republic. We also learned that her permanent move wasn't just to get away from the fast-paced life of New York. Danielle was running away from a very large amount of debt. And from what we could tell, Johan didn't know anything about it. He wanted to go to the U.S. to make more money. But Danielle expected him to now support them both in the Dominican Republic. Pero yo no quiero trabajar más. He tried to scam her to get to the U.S., and she turned around and scammed him. This woman married a man that was looking for a better life in the U.S. He works at a resort. She didn't marry him for his money. But she suddenly expected him to step up financially. Neither of them are living up to each other's expectations. So what can these two really offer each other now? She crushed his dream of moving to the U.S. and he can't financially support her so she can retire. It feels like we were basically just waiting for this relationship to implode. And it doesn't take long for the cracks to form. Danielle is getting to the end of her last visit to the Dominican Republic. When she does head back to the U.S., she's going to pack her stuff and move. But before she does, she wants to meet up with her friend that is there on vacation. This is Sophie's first time meeting Johan, and she has some questions for him. ¿Tu padre no te pide nietos? Claro, yo quiero nietos. When she asks Johan if he has any kids, Johan shares some information that Danielle was not aware of. So he's saying women have gotten pregnant, but they haven't been able to Alguna sustain a baby. A propósito. Danielle says that she's not upset about what happened, but upset that Johan wasn't being honest. He had told me that she lost the baby and had a miscarriage. Like, why would you lie about something like that? That doesn't make any sense to me. This is so ironic coming from someone who is lying about running away from huge debt. Johan still has hope that they will go to the U.S., so I'm pretty sure he doesn't know anything about that. Daniela is still very bothered by this new information the next day. Tú no dice ella quiere terminar. But Johan doesn't think it's a big deal, since it has nothing to do with Danielle. Si se lo sacó o no se lo sacó, ella no tiene que ver con eso. I think Danielle is paranoid because she is the one with the big lie. But her involving herself in someone else's private choice is just too much. I have a problem with liars. I have zero tolerance for dishonesty. With me, once the trust is broken, it's broken forever. With the knowledge we have about her bankruptcy, she's just looking like a huge hypocrite at this point. I can't even try to see her side, especially when she just keeps trying to escalate this argument and Johan just sits there. Tú cállate la boca. Tú entiende. She's so disrespectful and he's not phased at all. What does she want him to do? Apologize? If that's the case, then she should come clean about her debt and see if he accepts her apology for lying this whole time. You are a toxic human. Soy tóxico. Because this isn't who you were. Danielle leaves frustrated, and the next morning reveals that she spent the night alone. Oh no. This isn't just like a boyfriend girlfriend situation. This is a husband. Like, this is my husband, and I shouldn't be sleeping alone without my husband while he stays at his parents' house. That feels ridiculous. Johan does come over and tries to work things out. Me siento cómodo recordando, hablando de eso, porque fue un momento. Muy desagradable. They end up making up, but really quickly, I just want to clarify something. I am not completely on this guy's side either. He was very obviously looking to find someone to get him to the U.S. Porque aquí yo trabajo y, y no me da para nada. Todo dominicano quiere ir a los Estados Unidos. 
but I can't stand Danielle to the point where he doesn't bother me much. She is talking so much about how she hates dishonesty and lying, when that's really all she's been doing. And when she packs up all of her things and finally moves to the Dominican Republic, she doesn't get any more tolerable, especially when they try to get all of her suitcases in the car. Tiene espacio para todo? No. They always rent the same car, so he obviously brought that car to pick up Danielle. I didn't tell Johan that I had 10 suitcases, but I feel like he should have realized that I was moving here. So she didn't tell him how many suitcases she had, but it's his fault that they don't fit. I'm surprised that when Johan picks me up, he shows up in a four-door and not a van. The Dominican Republic is a big vacation spot, so can't they just rent a different car there? Why do I feel like Danielle is banned from renting cars there? I mean, she never pays her bills. Burn! <laughs> Big Ed the Bee wants to remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you don't, he will fly into your house and body shame you. It makes no sense to go to the gym and then go to 7 Eleven and eat nachos. Mi amor. No, mi amor. Yo man ahead. It's mi cosas. Por eso, yo la amarré. Yo voy a conducir. No. They argue for a while about who's going to drive the car. We both know that I'm a better driver. It's not like he thinks he's a better driver. He knows damn well that I'm a better driver. After making sure everyone watching knows she is the better driver, she does give up and let him drive. Tú sales con pendejadas. No me gusta cuando tú piensas tú estás mi padre. Johan has expressed a few times that he believes in traditional gender roles. So why the heck did he marry Danielle? Sí, yo soy el del pene, pero yo soy el hombre. She definitely doesn't agree that he is in charge because he is a man. So how will they make any important decisions if they aren't on the same page? It also seems like Johan is now voicing more of how he feels. And Danielle doesn't like that at all. Though I might be a little bit tired in this moment, this isn't something that's going to fly long term. This is what happens when you meet someone on vacation and think your relationship will be the same in real life. The vacation is over now. And these two don't even seem to know each other well at all. They have barely left the airport and have started arguing. They have always had a long distance relationship, but now Danielle has officially moved to the Dominican Republic. How will they get along now that they are together in person all of the time? So far, it's not starting off well. On the next episode, Danielle has a friend come visit and Johan is not happy about it. So how will this go? Will they make it? Will Danielle become even more irritating to watch? Oh geez, I hope not. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!